make sure it has its way in our hearts today, that we not in any way um, allow the Word of God to somehow pass us up or go right over us because we're just distracted with so many things that we're thinking about. Um, I want us to come in and focus our mind and our attention like a laser beam on the Word of God. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And so uh, let's pray, and then I'm going to be bringing a message. Uh, I sent you the, the graphic. Not sure if you got it. Um, I'm going to be bringing a message entitled Enemies of the Eagle. Enemies of the Eagle. And um, you'll see uh, as we get started, amen, and take flight, <laughs> no pun intended, um, <laughs> amen, somebody say amen. All right, let's pray. Father, I ask you today to think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. I ask you to send the kind of anointing in this place that makes preaching and teaching easy. I ask you, Father, that as a shaft of light into a dark room, that your word would break through every dark area in our lives. In the name of Jesus, every place that we have covered up and not allowed the light to shine, God, I ask that your word would pierce right through the darkness. In the name of Jesus, and let the anointing of the Holy Spirit tear down every argument, tear down every imagination as your word is being delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be none of me and all of you as the word of God goes forth. In the precious name of Jesus, I arrest every demonic destruction. In the name of Jesus, every wandering mind, in Jesus' name, uh, let it halt to attention. In Jesus' precious name, somebody say amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to deal with a subject today that I am entitling the enemies of the eagle. The enemies of the eagle. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and never faint. One of the things that the enemy wants to do in our lives is to have us grow weary. Because if we grow weary, we are unable to run the race. The other thing that the Bible describes in verse 31 there of Isaiah 40 is that we can faint. The enemy wants us to faint because when we faint, we give up. When we faint, we don't have the strength to continue. We just basically allow ourselves to just kind of uh, be immobile and inactive. If you can put it back to where, to where it was. No, it's just my, okay, all right. Maybe it's this thing that's kind of doing its own thing. All right. Praise God. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt by the Spirit of the Lord to guide you through this journey in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be messing with me, devil, in the name of Jesus. I'm not referring to him, by the way. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Word of God is much more important than all the announcements and everything else that... Praise the Lord. And, and, and that wasn't disturbed. Come on. You see the devil there? I do. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's... let's and if this is an issue, give me the handheld. All right? Just give me the handheld. I'm not going to wait on that deal in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. That's it. That's it. Don't touch it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about the believer. 
And God goes to great lengths to describe us. And in order for God to describe us, oftentimes He uses, um, he uses illustrations. Everybody say illustrations. Come on, say illustrations. Hold, hold on a second because I am not going through this. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, let, yeah, let's pray in the name of Jesus because there's no way on God's green earth I'm going to allow the Word of God to be distracted in Jesus' name. I will put the microphone down and just start preaching without it. Is there an amen? amen. Praise God. No need for this to be happening. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right. So let's pray while... Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just lower it down. It's too hot. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let me move back here. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. All right. Praise God. All right. If we can stay right there like that, we should be fine. All right. Praise God. Let's pray, though. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every demonic distraction as the Word of God goes forth. Your Word says that heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. And so, Father, I come against every distraction, every demonic activity, even in the sound and the technology. In the name of Jesus, I command you, devil, in Jesus' name, you release and let go now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. All right. So God goes to great lengths in order to describe to us who we are and how we are. Look at somebody and say, who you are and how you are. All right. And see, now this is what's going to happen. The enemy tried to mess with one voice. Now I'm going to make you all preachers as well. Amen. All right. Okay. All right. Look at your neighbor. I want you to tell them right now, God went to great lengths. To use symbols and analogies in order to teach you who you are and how you are. Is there an amen? All right. So in the Bible, God begins to describe us in terms that we could begin to research about. Uh, and begin to learn something about ourselves. He describes us as sheep. The Bible says that we are the sheep of his sheepfold. Amen? And so you in Scripture are described as a sheep. Now that is not something that should be a, a necessarily a, a good thing. Okay? Because sheep are known to be dumb. Okay. All right? We look at them as fluffy and so on and so forth and where we get wool and, and what have you. But, but sheep are hard of hearing and they are, uh, they are, they are short-sighted uh, and they're known to be dumb. Okay? And so when God was describing you as a sheep, it wasn't necessarily a compliment. All right. It basically is saying when we study the sheep that we have to stay close because if we draw further away from the shepherd, we no longer can see. We have to stay close to the shepherd. Are you listening to me? And the further we go away from the shepherd, it's harder to hear. Is there an amen? And sheep are also tormented by parasites. And the only thing that removes the parasite from, listen, from the head of the, of the sheep or of the lamb is oil poured on the head. Is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about here? The oil of the Holy Ghost, the anointing oil is the only thing that can deliver you from the parasites. Somebody say amen. amen. And so when God talks to us about sheep, He's describing you and me, not complimenting you and me. Is there an amen? amen? And then watch this now. When God refers us to something, then he tells us, study it out because I want to teach you something about you. So that's why the Bible teaches that, the, that Solomon, 
used to observe the ant. He said, study the ant. See, Solomon would stay long hours studying the ant. It might seem like frivolous and, and, and wasted time, but there was wisdom in the ant. Are you listening to me? And we would we learn and can learn lessons from the ant, as significant as it may seem. The Bible goes on to describe us as various things in Scripture. But today, I want to concentrate on one thing. Listen to me carefully. The eagle. God describes us as an eagle. And God begins to use the eagle as an analogy of you and me. And if we are wise and diligent and apply ourselves to understanding, then we'll see great lessons from the eagle. Is there an amen in the house? Now, I'm not going to be speaking today about what is typically said about the eagle. Uh, it's usually typically said about the eagle that the eagle goes through a period and a series of renewal and how and the claws and the, and, and, and the beak and, and the feathers and so on and so forth. I don't necessarily want to deal with that. We've heard a lot of messages about that. But I want to deal with some other aspects about the eagle and I want you to get a revelation of yourself as you are sitting here and I want you to apply this truth to yourself, to your own life, to where you are right now. Is there an amen in the house? All right. And so the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. With wings as eagles. Now. One of the things that uh, the Bible describes uh, and one of the things that is very understood when you study eagles is that eagles have four primary enemies. Everybody say four primary enemies. Uh, these are the enemies of the eagle. And if we learn anything about ourselves, I am certain that as we study the enemies of the eagle, what the eagle constantly has to be looking out for, uh, then we'll learn something about ourselves. And maybe, just maybe, you will get delivered from certain things that you're facing right now in your life because of the understanding that's going to be deposited in you, into you in the next few moments. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Now, everybody say eagles have enemies. Now, first of all, the eagle is a majestic, a majestic uh, animal. It's a majestic bird. Uh, eagles fly and soar very high. One of the things that you have to understand about eagles as well is that eagles do not eat dead things. I said eagles do not de e uh, eat dead things. Uh, vultures eat dead things. They surround dead carcasses. The vulture does. But the eagle bypasses dead things, is not interested with dead things. As a matter of fact, when an eagle kills or grabs an, a, an animal, whether it be a rabbit, or whether it be a fox, or whether it be whatever it is, um, it takes it really high up to its perch, where their nest is, and that's where the eagle will kill and then feed their young. They feed on fresh meat. Everybody say fresh meat. Say it again. Listen to me very carefully. Stop feeding on dead things. Stop feeding on dead things. Stop feeding yourself music that is corrupting. Stop feeding yourself programs on television that are feeding your spirit that are corrupting you. Stop feeding off of the wrong kind of relationships and friendships and so on and so forth. Things that are corrupting you. Stop feeding off of these things because inevitably you will not be able to soar as God intends for you to soar. Is there an amen in the house? Somebody say amen. amen. And so the eagle is a very interesting animal, and it's no doubt why God compares us to this beautiful bird. First of all, the eagle, as I mentioned, has four, how many? Four enemies. 
the first of the enemies and please write this down those of you that are taking notes and learn something about yourself the number one enemy of the eagle is the ground everybody say the ground you might say how is the ground the enemy of the eagle well 40 percent of eagles do not survive their first flight 40 percent of eagles do not survive their first flight why because there is something known as negotiating the ground negotiating the ground and eagles at that stage in their development have not learned yet to negotiate the ground and so they will throw themselves from a very high height and they will oftentimes as well see a prey on the ground and dive in in order to grab the prey but because they have not learned to negotiate the ground hear me now they end up crashing and they they end up dying or suffering harm to the point where they're incapable of flying how does that relate to you and me most new believers or people that are new in the things of God have not learned yet to negotiate the ground and so they are reaching for things and don't realize how close the ground is and how easy it is to crash are you listening to me and so they though they have taken flight they end up swooping back down again trying to associate with lowly things trying to apprehend or grab a hold of things that are low and on the ground are you listening to me and because they are doing it quickly they end up crashing they need to learn to negotiate the ground we as a as a leadership have to teach new believers that they can easily fall if they're not careful are you listening to me they can easily crash if they're not careful somebody say amen one of the things that I used to do when I was uh, in the Lord and discipling uh, people in my pastor's church I used to always get around new people why because I remember my walk with the Lord and I remember how difficult certain seasons of the year were you see I knew that I when I first got saved I didn't learn quickly enough to negotiate the ground so I found myself constantly crashing anybody been there okay you think you can you think you can grab a hold of this and grab a hold of that and before you know it you're flat on on your face anybody anybody say amen to that all right and so I had to learn quickly how to negotiate the ground how not to crash how not to fall so I had to begin to study the seasons of the year that for me were most vulnerable not only the seasons of the year but people and circumstances that I had to stay away from because ultimately I was on a journey to soar high I was on a journey listen to me carefully to heaven is there an amen in other words I realized Jesus was real heaven was real but as real as Jesus and heaven is so was the devil and hell and I knew that if I didn't do anything to keep myself from crashing I was gonna end up in hell I was gonna end up in a place completely destitute from the presence and the glory of God how many know what I'm talking about in this place is there an amen in the house all right so you cannot play with your salvation whatever a man sows that what he, that's also what he ends up reaping is there an amen and so you have to understand that this is a real deal this is not a church game that we play every Sunday let's get let's get dressed up in our nice churchified uh, attire and let's go to church with the rest of the religious nuts let's just go ahead and sing a few songs and 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 just appease the religious gods this is a real thing that we have going here this is a real God that wants a real relationship with you that cares about the decisions that you make cares about what you do and do not do is there an amen in the house God cares about you stop not caring about yourself 
Stop neglecting the very one that loves you and cares about you. So much so that he gave his only son to die for you on an old rugged cross. Is there an amen, an amen in the house? And so what did I have to do? I had to negotiate the ground quickly, man, because I was, I was hitting that thing fast. And so I learned, I said, wait a minute. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to stay away uh, from certain people. Um, and I need to prepare before certain seasons of the year. For me, it was always either the holidays, holidays, because, you know, there was a lot of things going on in the holidays, and somehow, some way, we tend to feel that the holidays are an excuse to sin. An excuse to do something contrary to God's heart. And some of us use all sorts of excuses uh, to, to be borderline Christian. Are you listening to me? Okay, so then you have, you have Christmas coming up and, and, and Thanksgiving coming up. And sometimes if you know that going to Uncle, Uncle Cholo's house, if you know that going uh, to, 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 to uh, Tia Maria's house, you know, and it is going to cause you to stumble because they just pull out all of the, the, the Christian brothers, and I'm not talking about real Christians, and, and, and they pull out all of the drinks and all of the strong drink and all of this and all of that, and it's all there for the taking. If you have not built enough spiritual resistance, and you know and you know who you are and you know what makes your knees come on weak is there an amen in the house if you know that then you know what stay away from tia maria's house give her a call that morning love you tia love you mwah, mwah, mwah. but i'm not going to be able to go there today what do you mean no i can't Come on now. I'll interpret that. Just pray, the Lord will give you interpretation. But the truth of the matter is, if you know that something will cause you to fall, then stay away. Is there an amen in the house? Stay away. I used to have to stay away. And I, the reason why I use Maria is because I used to have a Tia Maria. And Tia Amalia. And I used to have to stay away. Why? Because I had some cousins there that used to like, to, they used to like me. Cousins, yeah, I know it's ugly. But I used to stay away from some crazy cousins. I pray they're not watching right now. I used to stay away from them. Why? Because every time I came to their parties, uh, there was one particular cousin that always wanted to get me drunk. So she used to give me orange juice. She goes, it's just orange juice. I'm like, really? So what ends up happening is that as a Christian, I had to make some decisions. Either I'm going to be real or I'm going to be fake. Either I'm going to be a hypocrite or I'm going to be genuine and authentic. What am I going to be here? I'm going to be a Christian at church or, and, and then when I'm out there, I, I act like the devil, talk like the devil and don't really care about the decisions, have no discretion whatsoever. If I wanted to be fake, I'd be working, I'd be working in downtown and in politics. I, I wouldn't be a Christian. I would not be a pastor right now. If I wanted to be a too, uh, 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 a, 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 a hypocrite, a 
two, living two lives, I would, I would find some other occupation. But not be a pastor. Do you understand that? Is this okay? So I had to negotiate the ground. And so I had to stay away from certain people. Uh, it doesn't hurt me, Pastor. Oh, it's just you. You, you know, you're just, you're just, you're just too religious. Too spiritual. So I ended up staying away from certain people. Then I had to watch certain seasons, like the spring. The spring would always get me nervous when I was a new Christian. For the first, I don't know, four or five years, I was negotiating the ground. Four or five years learning how not to fall flat on my face every springtime. Why do you say every springtime? Because man, the moment it gets hot, the moment it gets, it gets warm out, out are the Daisy Dukes. Come on, somebody. You can see their glory. Come on, come on, come on. You can see their most, their almost Holy Ghost. Come on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so, man, that used to, that used to put me on edge. It, it just used to mess with me. I couldn't go anywhere. Because I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to sin. I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Is this, is the, is, was this just me or? or <clears throat> so I had to take great uh, steps and, 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 and take measures in order to keep my heart pure before God. I wasn't playing games. I loved God. I knew heaven was a real place. Hell was as real as, as heaven was. Is there an amen in the house? And so I had to negotiate the ground. 40% of eagles do not survive their first flight. They end up crashing dead. The Bible talks about four different types of ground. The Bible says that the seed falls into four different types of hearts. The Bible says that it falls on the path on the path that seed falls on the path and there are people here be very careful that you are stay clear of where everyone's walking are you listening to me stay clear where everyone's going what everyone's doing stay clear that's the seed that fell on the path it could not take root. Why? Because it was, everyone was basically trampling on the seed. Everyone. Don't let people in your lives trample on the seed of God's word. Don't let an old boyfriend, don't let an old girlfriend, and I might say new boyfriend or new girlfriend, don't allow them to trample on what God has sown in your heart. Don't allow them. Don't allow them. Whenever I was walking in the mall as a young man, a new Christian, I was walking down through... Come on, I'm going to be very practical today. Somebody say, give it to me practical. When I would be walking down the mall, if there was a girl that stood out, and, and I stood out to her, and she would start a conversation with me, and, and, and so on and so forth, what ends up happening is that I would... If... if, if I saw that she was pretty and, uh, and, and I saw and I had a conversation with her for five or ten minutes or whatever the case may be. The moment I saw, number one, she wasn't a Christian, didn't know the Lord. Number two, wanted to go and do whatever she wanted to do. I would always look at them and look at her and say, wait a minute, you really don't care about me. All you care about is you. You care about you and that's it. But you don't really care about my salvation. You don't care about me. You don't care about who I am. And, and you don't care about any relationship I have with Christ. Come on, somebody. I would stay away from and clear from those kind of people. I would stay clear, clear, clear away. 
because I knew they didn't really care about me. They just cared about the moment. They just cared about something, getting something. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? What are people trying to get from you? What are they just trying to get from you? Negotiate the ground because it, before you know it, you can crash real fast. And the sad thing is that you may not be able to survive. There is good news, though. But listen to me very carefully. It's one thing to ride the wind and fly and soar, but it's another thing to negotiate the ground. Everyone does well on the nest on Sundays. Here in service, everyone does well because there's safety. Everybody say there's safety in the net. But what happens when you take flight Monday through Saturday? What happens when you take flight Monday through Saturday? So many believers soar on Sunday but crash on Monday. Did you hear me? So many believers soar on Sunday but crash on Monday. And I might even go a little further. So many believers soar on Sunday morning and crash on Sunday night. Are you listening to me? Well, I already did the church thing. I already went to church. Everybody say, why? Because they have not learned how to be Christians in the real world. Everybody say, be a Christian in the real world. How to react as a Christ follower. How do I react as a Christ follower in this real world? Once I leave church, and once I'm not around the brothers, once I'm alone on my phone, once I'm alone in the car, once I'm, once I'm alone just doing my thing, what am I? How am I? What's going on with my decision making? I don't know how to negotiate in the real world, how to live this thing out in the real world. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Is this okay? All right. Look at somebody and say, we have to teach them how to negotiate the ground. Is there an amen? All right. The good news is this, that you can get back up if you've hit the ground. Look at somebody and say, you can get back up. I love this, but God gives us the blessing of a second chance. And for some of us, a third, and a fourth, and a fifth, and so on. Is there an amen? With God, listen, look at somebody. Give them a little shove. Come on, come on. I told you, you're going to help me preach. Give them a little shove and say, with God, there's always a, a getting up time. Come on, say, with God, there's always a getting up again time. Come on, somebody. Is there an amen? Getting up again. Getting up again. Getting up again. Somebody say, get up again. Come on, somebody say, stop, stop staying where you are. Come on, say, if you've crashed, get up again. If you have crashed, get up again. Get up again. Rise up again. Is there an amen? Number two, the second enemy of the eagle. The second enemy of the eagle is the snake. This is a natural born enemy of the eagle, a snake. You might say, how in the world is a snake that is confined to the ground, slithers and has no wings, no majestic wings, is, can be an enemy to such a majestic bird and to a soaring uh, bird like the eagle. How is it? I'll tell you why. Because the snake, everybody say the snake. The snake 
will always seek to make its way up to the nest. Snakes have a keen eyesight, and they can see from far away. And a snake has a keen sense of smell. Its tongue picks up odors and picks up scents, oftentimes a mile away, driven by the wind. And a snake will identify where an eagle's nest is and will begin to find its way up a mountain or up a tree and will go as high as high can be. Are you listening to me? And the snake is, is an interesting enemy because the snake, watch this now, the snake of, of the enemy of the eagle, the snake, does not attack the mature eagles. It will lay waiting for the mama eagle and the daddy eagle to take flight. And when they take flight, the snake says, this is my moment. And so he goes and slithers into, by the way, this massive, massive nest. And he'll go in and his desire is, and his attempt is to kill the eaglets before they reach maturity. The devil will try to take you out, especially in the formative years in your walk with the Lord. He'll try, hear me, to take you out but in order to take you out, he has to try to remove you from mature believers. So he'll use gossip. He'll use backbiting and slander. And anything he can use to put a wedge between you and a more mature believer. He'll try to shut the voice of the only spiritual and godly reason that comes your way. He'll try to destroy the relationship. He'll try to do whatever he can do in order to keep you from a mature believer. He'll try to keep you, and listen, he'll war with you and try to choke your desire to even come to church. Why? Because if he, keep, if he can keep you from the fellowship, is there an amen? He, if he can keep you from the, from, from the preaching of God's word, the teaching of God's word, then he gets you to a point where you become vulnerable and he can literally take you out at any moment. But I love this about the little eaglets. The little eaglets are not totally defenseless. The little eaglets are not totally defenseless. What they will end up doing, and this is very typical and characteristic, when they see a snake coming into their nest, what they would end, they'll end up doing is letting out a loud screeching noise. They'll begin to let, to let out a loud screeching noise. And the mother eagle and the father eagle will hear it from, from miles away. An eagle is known to dive at 125 to 130 miles an hour. So the moment that the baby eaglet begins to screech and scream, as it were, the father eagle begins to take a dive. The mother eagle begins to take a dive. And they come in at 135 miles an hour. And they will get to the nest. And the moment that they arrive at the nest, they don't perch on the corner, on the side of the, net, the nest. Like when they're bringing food they will come in immediately and stomp with their huge claws on top of the snake and watch this now and they will take that snake 
with their talons. They're called talons. They're as big oftentimes as a, as a, as a, as a man's hands. They'll take their talons and wrap them around that snake and literally with their beak tear the, the snake in pieces. But this is powerful. Not only do they tear the snake in pieces, but then at that very moment, the mother or father snake, uh, the mother or father eagle will take that snake that's just been torn in pieces and feed it to the eaglets. Are you listening to me? I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody right now, but the Bible says that what the devil has intended for evil, God can take and turn it around for your good. What the devil tried to destroy you with, God will come in 135 miles an hour and begin to grab a hold of the enemy. Whatever the devil is using to destroy you, tear it up and feed you with it. Is there an amen in the house? Come on. Woo! Well, Pastor Daniel... What, has, what gives you the qualifications and the credentials to counsel married couples? Lately we've been counseling and we've been on television, national television programs. My wife has been uh, the invite. I've just happened to ride her coattail so I kind of get in there sometimes on the sly or on the sneak tip. Come on somebody. And so I, I, I've been there where they're like, well, let, let me hear about his side of the story. Then they'll interview the both of us. And, and someone says, they might say, well, what gives you the qualifications? What gives you the, the credentials to counsel couples and, 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 and pastoral marriages? Let me tell you what has given me the credentials uh, to stand on an, or sit on a national television and speak into the lives of marriages in crisis because I have obtained no 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 I have earned a doctor's degree in a hellish marriage are you listening to me in a marriage that's been through hell and back I have earned a doctor's degree on surviving a hellish marriage is there an amen my wife my wife has earned a doctor's degree in overcoming come on somebody in overcoming in overcoming in overcoming I don't know about you but I feel qualified to do what I'm doing because I've been through some things I've been through some stuff the devil tried to destroy my life and God took that snake he tore it up in pieces and fed it to us and now we're able to take from the very thing the devil tried to destroy us with to be able to lift up and restore other marriages in crisis I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody today the devil will come and try to mess with you and God will take that very thing, tear it up, and feed it to you so that now you can bless those that are going through the very same things, the very same trial, the very same hell you've been through. Is there an amen in the house? What the devil intended for evil, God will turn around for your good. Look at somebody and say amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Our time is almost up. The other enemy of the eagle. This is a very interesting one. As majestic as the eagle is, as supreme, as skilled as the eagle is, he has an enemy in his closest cousin, the falcon. The falcon is the close cousin of the eagle. And the falcon can fly faster, hear me, can fly faster than the eagle. And usually falcons will kill, will kill eagles for 
no other reason than because it's intimidated by the eagle and because it's intimidated by the eagle the falcon will seek to kill it because the eagle's size is intimidating because the eagle's skill is intimidating because how high the eagle can soar is intimidating so the falcon would rather come and kill the eagle in order to eliminate any kind of threat listen to me very carefully everybody say the falcon say it again but the only way that a falcon can kill an eagle hear this the only way that a falcon can kill an eagle the only way that the devil can try to take you out is by coming through your blind spot the eagle has a blind spot the eagle's blind spot is way up high and directly behind its head directly behind its head is the blind spot of the eagle and the falcon will fly really high and stay at a distance behind the eagle as the eagle's soaring and then the eagle the, fa the falcon which by the way dives much faster than the eagle will come in and will grab its own talons and beak and try to dig them into the spinal cord or the backbone of the eagle if the falcon is able to dig its own talons and beak into the and break the backbone of the eagle in flight it can kill the eagle listen to me carefully guard your backbone your blind spot you know what the blind spot of the believer is his prayer life his prayer life if the devil is able to blind you listen if he's able to break your backbone the very thing upon which everything else is mobile everything else moves in your life it's the source where everything else every agility every movement occurs it occurs from the backbone from the spinal cord are you listening to me it's where signals are received it's where signals go out it's where mobility and motion occur everything goes through the spinal cord and if the falcon is able to destroy or break the backbone of the eagle then the eagle becomes immobile and will literally fall from the highest heights to the lowest depths are you listening to me if the devil is able to keep you from praying if the devil is able to keep you from praying he has attacked your blind spot or attacked you through there are you listening to me it's being too busy to notice it's being too occupied in other things to realize the enemy is in position are you listening to me and you'll just continue to soar and you'll just continue to soar you feel you have a you don't have a care in the world but if you're not looking out and over your blind spot the enemy may want to take or be successful in taking you out look at somebody and say watch the blind spot come on say watch the blind spot is there an amen in the house glory to God now the other thing that the falcon is a symbol of is interesting the falcon is a symbol of other believers a lot of times our blind spot is the people oftentimes hear me right next to us no 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 don't look for don't go on a witch hunt I saw a number of people go like this <laughs> listen to me carefully the devil knows that oftentimes the close cousin of the eagle is our blind spot because it's only cousin Falcon it's just brother Falcon sister Falcon and the problem with the Falcon 
because it's a close kin to the eagle. It flies like the eagle. It often looks like the eagle. Are you listening to me? But it's different. The falcon will eat dead things. And you have to be very careful because a lot of times the people in the church or people closest to you in your life are the ones that are the stumbling block in your life. Be very careful because remember what I said about the falcon? Why is it that it wants to kill the eagle? It's intimidated by the eagle. And did you know that when you're seeking God and you're fire hot for God and you are speaking God's word and spending time in prayer, falcons will be intimidated by you. And so you know what they want to do? They want to get you to their level. And so they'll try to engage you in gossip. They'll try to uh, get you to skip out on church. Hey, we don't, hey, it's a beautiful day out, man. Let's go. Let's go to the beach. Beach. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Let's go. Let's go to the air and water show, which is always on a Sunday and Saturday. Come on. You might say, Pastor, but it's no big deal. Let, 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 let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, if I came up to you and slapped you on the face and then walked away telling you it's no big deal I've never done it before it's just once how would you feel about that you're like whoa what's, we're going to have to box pastor we're going to have to you and, we're going to have to box right now why? Because just one time was enough. And for a lot of us, just one time is enough. Just one toke of that marijuana, just, just one hit of that heroin, just one snort of that cocaine, just one. No big deal. It's really no big deal. I'm pretty sure that there are people in this church that I could have them stand up and tell me what was the most difficult thing, what is the number one lesson that you had trying to break free from that drug addiction in your life. 99.9% .9 of the people will tell me, my biggest regret is having started in the first place. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Did you know that when you are married and you give in to an extramarital affair and you think it's just a fling, a momentary fling, you've just entangled yourself beyond recognition and you think you can just wipe your mouth and just walk away. And let me talk to the young people. Young people, listen to me carefully. There's a thing we never hear about in church nowadays. Not from television preachers, not even from church preachers. It's an old word. It's an old King James word called fornication. My wife was talking about sexual immorality. That's basically what it amounts to. And we don't listen and we don't hear messages about fornication anymore. Why? Maybe, maybe that's why. Sexual immorality is an epidemic in our society. Maybe that's why. Because we no longer, the church has been muzzled. The church has forgotten how to blush. Are you listening to me? And so we've allowed our mouth to be muzzled. Talk to me about how blessed I am. Talk to me about the blessing, not the mess up. Talk to me about the bless up, not the mess up. Come on, somebody. What is fornication? 
Some of you young people have no clue. What is fornicate? What, what is he saying? What is that? Is that a dish or something? What? We got to stay away from some steak or something? What, what is this? Fornication is the equivalent of adultery, but for the single young man, young woman. Fornication is the same exact thing, but it's different time in your life. When you're married, it's called adultery. You go to sleep with someone that's not your wife. When you go to sleep with someone that's not your wife, that's called adultery. And God hates adultery. As a matter of fact, God says that it will uproot our increase. We're over here trying to, woo, I'm blessed. And you're committing adultery, if not physically, in your heart. And it's robbing, it's eating up, it's eating up all of your increase, all of your increase. Well, the same thing is true for young people. When a young person goes to sleep with someone, God says, I hate that. Listen, God says, I designed sex and created it to, be, to take place within a covenant, a secure covenant relationship called marriage. And when you take it out of that context, it destroys you. It destroys you. It destroys you. It doesn't destroy me, Pastor. It just feels woohoo. The Bible says that he that commits adultery or fornication, listen, listen, listen. This is not Daniel Cruz that says this. God said it, the one who created and knows you better than you know yourself. He said this, destroys his own soul. Destroys his own soul. But it feels good, Pastor. Destroys his own soul. But it's just every so often destroys his own soul. But we're in love, destroys his own soul. Adultery. Fornication. Yeah, but, but I know so-and-so, and I know so-and-so, and I know so-and-so, and, and, and they did this before marriage, but they're doing cool. They're, they're doing good. Go live with them 24-7. And then see what song you come sing me after that. The number three enemy of the eagle, your enemy, is the falcon. The falcon will get you at your, in your blind spot. You know how many falcon girlfriends I had? When I was a Christian... Going to church, Pentecostal, fire-filled, spirit-filled church, fasting, praying. I had some falcon girlfriends. And I remember one day I took one of my falcon girlfriends to her house. And I thought I was blessed because she was pretty, beautiful. She went to the church. I'm like, what can be better than that? And one day when I went to drop her off at her house, that her parents were not home, I went to drop her off, and I said, are your parents home? She said, no. My pastor told me never to go into a woman's house, a girl's house, if, if the parents weren't home. That's my pastor who now went to be with the Lord. And I remember that I said, oh, no, no, no. I think it's time for me to exit. And she goes, wait, 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 hold on. Aren't you going to kiss me before I leave, before you leave? And I said, well, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I can do that. And I remember that when I went to kiss her she pressed me against her and she tried to seduce me now I'm going to tell you something 
For some of you all that are out there like, ooh, ooh, and yeah, you didn't take advantage of that. Yeah, you dumb, Pastor, you dumb. I loved God. I didn't give my life to Jesus to play games, to play the hypocrite, play the fool. I believed that my salvation cost a heavy price. God sent his son, shed blood, died a criminal's death for me. So I can just go and do my thing. I said, I'm sorry. I went and left. I got home and I told her, you know what? I don't think I want to see you anymore. She says, why not? What, what happened? And I said, the sad thing is that you don't even know what happened. I said, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. That's it. It's over. So you know what she did? She went and told her pastor that I broke her heart. And her pastor then looked at me and told his leaders they had to be careful about me because I was a heartbreaker. What are you willing to go through to live for Jesus? Is there an amen in the house? <clears throat> and finally, the fourth and final enemy of the, the eagle is, write this down, the storm. The storm. Eagles can sense a storm before the average person can detect or even sense that a storm is coming. They know when a storm is on its way when it is many, many miles away before there's any visible sign. You know why? Because the eagles have behind their ears two what can be described as sensors. And they're so sensitive. And so when the eagle is perched way up high or soaring, and it's going along the way, it'll pick up with those two sensors that there's a storm coming. So you know what the eagle will do? Because it senses a storm coming, it will climb and climb and climb and climb high. And it'll remain perched really, really high. And it waits there. Watch this. It will do what? Come on, say it again. It'll do what? One more time. Say it louder this time. It'll do what? Wait. They that wait on the Lord. Watch this. It waits. What is it waiting for? Every storm arrives with thermal currents. Thermal currents. These thermal currents can be sensed. They're warm thermal currents. And the eagle knows that these currents begin to do this when the, when the storm is coming. They begin to rise. The thermal currents do. They begin to rise until the eagle is so high where it could not go on its own and then it takes off. And now it's above the storm. When you wait on God, you will know when to ride the wind the current of the Holy Spirit in your life. You'll know exactly what you need to do and you know exactly when you need to do it and all you have to do, listen to me carefully, when you wait on God, you let yourself go 
and let the Holy Spirit guide you during that season. Listen, the eagle does not grow tired riding the thermal currents. You know why? Because eagles have this one mechanism, if you will, in their bone structure. And what they do is that they spread their wings eight feet wide. And they throw their wings back and lock in. And the eagle no longer has to grow weary and tired flapping against the storm. All it does, it, it waits for the right moment, locks its wings, and then just drops itself right on the current. And the current takes, listen, the eagle and raises the eagle all the way up above the storm without growing weary and without growing tired. That's why the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and never faint. Is there an amen in the house? I need somebody to stand up on their feet right now and say, God, I will wait on you. 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 Woo! Come on, just spread your wings, if you will. Come on, spread, 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 spread. Father, we wait on you. And we ask you to take the current of your spirit and lift us up above every storm, above every contrary wind, above everything that would threaten our lives, everything that would threaten our family, everything that would threaten our children, everything that would threaten our marriage, everything that would threaten my walk with you. My God, I will learn to wait on you. I will learn to rest on you. In the name of Jesus, somebody say yes. Real quickly, real quickly. When I count to three, I know my time is running, but I'm just going to say a general prayer, a general prayer. But I need those right now. I need right now, for those of you that say, that's me. I'm that eagle you're talking about. I know, I know you're the eagle I've been talking about. Because God said you're the eagle. God said you're the eagle. But some of you are being affected by the falcon. Come on, some of you have been crashing on the ground. You have not learned to negotiate the ground. Come on, some of you. Some of you have been allowing, allowing the enemy to come in and totally take you out. Say no longer, no longer, no longer. When I count to three, just come up right now. Real quickly, one, two, three, real quick, real quick. Come on. We want to pray on a small act of faith is all we need, is all God needs. Just a little act of faith. It could just mean you walking a few feet from where you are to this altar as an act of faith. And God will move. And God will do. And God will begin to lay down. Hallelujah. And grab a hold of whatever is trying to grab a hold of you. Tear it up. Feed it to you so that your mess can be your message your test becomes your testimony come on close your eyes put your hand over your heart will you please and say Lord Jesus I thank you for describing me as an eagle I thank you that you mount me up 
raise me higher than I, can ever, than I could ever fly on my own. I ask you right now to lift me higher above every storm in my life. In the name of Jesus, help me right now to get rid of every falcon in my life. Everything attacking my life through the blind spot. In the name of Jesus, I ask you right now to help me negotiate the ground. Know what I have to stay away from. When I have to prepare. When I have to fast and pray. In the name of Jesus, I ask you right now to strengthen me that I soar like the eagles. Man, the power of the Holy Spirit is here right now. The power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, is there anybody here that you came with somebody but you don't know Jesus as Lord? You've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. You've never... Maybe you're a backslider and you never reconcile and say, Jesus, forgive me, man. I've been living like, like the devil. I've been messing up. Uh, the devil's been, tr been, been trying to kill me, my spiritual life, my spiritual walk. Father, I need you right now to come into my heart. I want to know if there's anybody here that says, I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. I want to pray with you real quickly. Come on, raise up your hand when I count to three. One, two, three. Right now, is there anybody? It says, I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. Raise it up real high, real high, real high. Glory to God. God bless you. God bless you right there. Praise the Lord. Anybody else that says, I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. If that's you and you're in your seats, will you get out of your seats and come forward, please? Come on. Just come forward if that's you. Those of you that are up here in the front. Hallelujah. God bless this young man right here. Amen. God bless this woman of God right now her son come on we're gonna pray right now in the name of Jesus I want everybody to repeat with them say Heavenly Father come on say it out loud Heavenly Father I recognize I've been a sinner but I ask you right now to forgive me of my sin everything I've done everything that's immoral sexual or otherwise forgive me of my sin every rebellion every lie every deceit you see it all forgive me God wash me right now cleanse me right now fill me right now and save me right now I thank you that right now everybody say right now I am saved. Come on, give Jesus a clap offer. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. My God. Anybody who ever said that prayer for the first time, with Christ or reconciled with Christ will you please Jose raise up your hand amen amen praise God just follow them right there if that's you just follow them amen all right praise the Lord real quickly real quickly before we leave for those of you that are young people youth if you're in your teens, if you are in your teens, 